man, this weather's getting warm out here now. Um, I just realized that. In my left ear, sound like my ear is going out. The left side of me, I'm hoping I'm not losing my hearing. Because as me being a DJ for the last 20 years plus years, I, 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 I de depend on hearing out both of my ears. Well, I think it popped just a little bit. Just a little bit, a little bit. But I was had something on my mind. And it's more to do about, well, you know what? Let me just go ahead and, and start off the uh, opening. And then I, why, as I think about why the opening is planned, I give you a thought, better pro thought process of what I'm thinking about. Here we go. Hey, it's your boy DJ Wolf here. You know, uh, it's getting to that time of year where weather is coming back to full normalcy again, and birds chirping, and the grass is about starting to grow green, and the trees are alive and blooming again. And down here in the DMV, of course, it's the cherry blossom season because the traffic is bad as hell. Uh, anyway, uh, it's DJ Wolf. What I was pondering about my mind is that also this time of year is when, you know, people do the spring break thing and eventually uh, about another month or so, kids be graduating high school and college. Uh, um, after, you know, I just get thought about something. I, damn, man, my kid graduated four years ago this, this month, next month. Next month will be four years since I graduated. That's a fox. That's a first. <laughs> hey, fox. You know what? This is the first area I've ever been in where I've actually saw foxes just coming out of nowhere. That was a fox. And they do bite. And they can't get rabies. And I don't want to be keeping one so freaking pet either. I'll tell you that. Um, I saw one not far from my son's school. Uh, about six years ago, he said he saw him out there at that over over that way. I was like, it's, it freaked me out. Foxes, but anyway, um, I just had some something on my mind about uh, how people will act, go to great length to try to be your friend and try to take advantage of you at the same time these so-called friends who try to be friends are really fake. I had one like that. And there's rights. I'm going to leave the person nameless. Um, he has since moved from this uh, out, but we, we, we used to live out that way. He moved out uh, to uh, to the upper suburbs. Um, i trying to think where I should say. Near, near Crofton area. For those of you who know who where Crofton is. But anyway, this guy, I used to go over his house, I worked on his computer, you know, I hung out with his family, um, played with his kids, his kids played with my, his, my son played with his son, they went to school, high school together and all that, you know, and helped him out with a change up and down there, you know, whatever. Of course, we were friends, you know, and uh, I used to bring him to the house sometimes, watch, we watched the fights and stuff like that, you know, and I ain't no problem with that. So I figured when he, he moved, you know, that they were doing a little bit better. They really weren't. They did move to a better, lo better, better location, though, but I guess he wasn't doing that much better. I couldn't really tell at the time, especially from all the accounts I heard. But I actually uh, was going to invite him to come to the fights, go watch the fights. And, of course, he had, uh, again, he asked me to go pick him up from the location he lived at, which was about 15 minutes or 20 minutes away from my house. Uh, and bring him back back to mine, even though he had a car this time. He didn't have a car before, but nevertheless, I ended up not doing it 
I don't remember why. I think I was tired or something. I don't. Know. I, I just. I was just wasn't feeling. I just wasn't. I, was, I wasn't feeling up to doing it. I had changed my mind by then. I said, "Forget, it, I'm tired," and I was. I was exhausted. I had an exhausting week. But sometimes you, you you think people try to be friends with you. They really try to use you. And I, sometimes I think that's how some some people are in the church too. And that's where it comes back to that. I really do believe that because I've been in situations where, where we had these so-called friends who were trying to be friends with me and they were actually just trying to use me. You know. And hence the reason why I probably don't have that many friends now. Because people who are going to really be friends with you are going to be about the business of being friends with you. Because they want to be friends with you. Because they, you know, they have an interest of you as though you were guys were kind of like blood brothers or something like that. A lot of people aren't like that. I had a few friends like that over the years. And unfortunately, they're no longer around. You know, they, you know, they, they, they've, uh, they've passed on. And it's unfortunate. I haven't met friends like that since. I really haven't. You know, I don't, like I said, I don't, myself, I don't trust too many people out here. I don't. I don't care if they're at church, work, or wherever. There's not very few people I trust in this, in this, on this earth anymore. Very few. And it's really sad. You know, it, it, it goes to show you that you can't really rely on nobody, man. Not anymore. I, especially as you get older. It's like, man, really? Where, you know, where have all the time? Where is the time fly? Where are all the friends gone? You know? And I guess they, they, they're, few and far, they're very few and far between anymore. You know? The real friends ain't out there anymore. You know, the only ones you have are the guy or the, what I call the perpetrators. People who be perp. What are you stopping for? You had to write away you one straight. God. The people who, who perpetrate fraud all the time. And those people who are posers, what I call them. Another name for posers. People who are posing like they are trying to, you know, you know, be in your corner. And they really don't give a shit about you. You know. That's why I kind of like stay in my own stay in my own lane about things like that because I know people are like that all the time. Nowadays, with certain people having hard, hard hard time finding jobs or keeping jobs, you know, and it, it and I know it's for the most part, I have a genuinely a genuinely different set of interests in people I know. You know, that's one thing about real friends that I had that were real friends. We all had almost, well, not exactly the same interests, but we had quite a bit of the same interests. You know, but not exactly the same interests. And it's unfortunate I don't, I don't really run to people like that anymore. I really don't. That's like, uh, among the church uh, programs or the church uh, functions I'm involved with or in some of the ministries I'm involved with, most of the people are older people. The bulk of them are. The very bulk of them are. Uh, my old lady and myself, we're probably one of the youngest people in the group and we're in our 50s. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it, it's weird. We're in our, like, our mid-50s. Roughly, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy, and I don't know. It's just I, I really don't know. I guess what I'm saying. I guess I don't have a lot of common with people like I used to, man. Anymore, you know. I'm not getting any younger at all. You know, if that's just how it is. Blowing me again. Wow. And, you know, unfortunately that's the case. What are we doing here? What are we all doing? I took that. I ain't that big around like some of y'all fools are. <clears throat> but I you know, I realized that. It's like, wow. Look at the time. Look what happened to, you know. Well, the youth, uh, well, all the time has flown over the years where 
you had them people you could bond with. And I was just saying that the other day in another podcast that three of the closest people that I was close with growing up, that when I was growing up, no longer around. My best friend, my cousin, and my uncle, man. They were three of the closest people that I was ever tight with, man. Yeah. And they're not immediate family. That's the bad part about it. You know, that's the bad part about it. I mean, people who actually had that special bond with people who, for lack of a better word, word really kind of got me. What are these fools doing? Stay in your lane, dickhead. That's not your lane. That's your lane, asshole. God, these people make me sick with this mess. They too busy trying to cut you off. I'm trying to cut me off my dang old ass. They make me sick with this mess. They do this every day out here. Every single day. Every day. It's like they don't know what they're doing on the road, man. You know, they But, you know, like I said, three of the closest people that I know, man. And at times I think about them every now and then, man, because these were people I was kind of, I was tight with my uncle. I was tight with my long-time best friend, and I was tight with my cousin. You know, my cousin... Daryl was mad, like he was like a big brother to me, man. He was. You know, I could go into it for uh, another time about why it came to be and how it came to be, but you know, I'm kind of also sad about the fact that uh, those people I wish were still rock could talk to and get good advice, man. I don't know three people a day I know that are like that. I really don't. I really don't. And I don't know. I think it's fucked up. It's real, real fucked up. You can't, you know, it's just sad. It's just sad. You know, I don't even know if I would, if, 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 and I'm going to be honest, I don't know if there's certain people at church I would actually uh, rely on uh, talking to on the regular basis or for advice or anything. I doubt that I would ever do that. I really do. I doubt that I would ever do that. But then I'm fortunate to also be old enough at my point in my wise years now in my 50s to be able to know about obtaining information for my own advice if I had to rely on people anymore since the people that I did rely on when I was younger uh, are no longer around. no longer alive but I appreciated every one of them of those, of those people I really did my best friend who actually gave me some really good advice back in the 90s man I still think about that he had, he he literally he literally saved my marriage I can honestly say that he did he just told me man you know don't go that way, man. Don't go that route. You know, you work too hard to stay where you're at. Go ahead. The best, the best advice I ever got from my best friend, man. And I love him for that. I do mess with him. Mess with him. He was like the brother to me, man. Just had to think about that. Last month, he would have turned 54. He never made the 45. It's your boy DJ Wolf. Um, I wanted to say that, man. You have good friends, and I mean, I ain't, I'm not talking about no uh, fly by night friends. I ain't talking about no regular acquaintances. If you have, we have acquaintances. I, I have very few. But if you have a friend that, that's really about the business of giving you sound advice, and you know, as about somebody who like care about you like a family member, you know. I mean, I I, I I work out with a dude now who, who uh, at the gym. 
who actually is a church member, and we're kind of like that. We we actually have a lot in common. I was shocked. I was very shocked. You know, we had the same issues with our family members. We got the same issues with, you know, it's just, it, I, we could go on all day. It's, it's almost like, you know how you, you look yourself in the mirror and you see your mirrored image of yourself and everything is exact. That's how this is. It's almost, it's almost like we're a kindred spirit of brothers who were in similar households of dysfunction, dysfunctionality within our family. Almost the same. It's almost it's scary. It's almost scary. It's so it's so close. I mean, it's wow. You know, the difference is he got more kids. Now. Anyway, <laughs> but that's, that's true. But you know, hey, but it's almost the same. And he, you know, he you know, he's like me. He's he's kind of a lot like me in a way. He's younger than I am, actually. But in a kind in a way, he's kind of like me because. You know he, he, you know he's been working. He's he's a, he's a long time. Uh, 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 he's a long time worker at his job, and I'm a long time working at mine. And he does he does decent for himself, and so do I. But he don't be all. You know, he don't be about that bullshit. Neither do I. You know. So I'm just saying. But I was thinking about something else too. I was like, you know, in black communities, man, we always try and size each other up. Just because you figure, ah, you know, we're too busy trying to strong arm each other. We ain't too, we ain't busy enough to try, try to try to fight oppression. We ain't trying to try to fight poverty. We ain't trying to fight racism. No, we ain't trying to do none of that shit. But when it comes to people within your own communities, who you need to pick up and lift up and stand shoulder to shoulder, oh no. Nah. That ain't gonna happen. That ain't like that. Won't do that. You know, more about that on another podcast. This is DJ Wolf. I'm out, guys.